Welcome to Binary Jazz. It's a podcast that releases occasionally. Uh, there are three of us, and we are probably not robots, but we are generating content for robots because probably that's all. That's uh, You might be a robot, too. Maybe you're not a robot. If you're not a robot, oh. we'd love to hear from you. Uh, but if you are a robot, then probably we don't need a response because we just so, assume. With Reddit, like selling their content to AI, maybe we oh, should... Okay. Um, pipe our pipe our our auto generated our... uh captions to Reddit so we can really help the AI overlords. Sure. I mean, we'll 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 get we'll have the intern get on that. Yeah, yeah. The I mean, <laughs> we need an intern. I mean, AI is the <laughs> intern, right? It's unpaid labor. No. No, 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 no. We need to embrace capitalism and exploit someone here. That's that's the only <laughs> way forward, obviously. Well, technically, depending on how far the rabbit hole you want to go, uh, using AI is exploiting someone. So, um, yeah, I'm down with that. I agree with that. I'm also um, thank you for meeting early. My parents are arriving today, so that's coincidental because my parents arrived last night. Hmm. My parents are not arriving, hopefully. That you know of. <laughs> that you know of. <laughs> because yeah, I, don't, I say yeah. hopefully because I, I'm not aware of it. So Yeah. yeah. Allison's going to get a call halfway through this uh, this recording. <laughs> hey, are you home? <laughs> yeah. We well, just thought yeah. we'd stop by. Yeah. We just took the stop ferry over. Island. Yeah. Um, Aaron and Lila are performing in an aerial arts performance tonight. Uh, nice. And also tomorrow, they're doing actually a total of, well, Erin's in two performances. She's in two numbers. So she's going to be doing six individual routines over the course of the next two days. Wow. 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 Yeah. <laughs> she's going to be tired, huh? Yeah. 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 And this week has been pretty <sighs> crazy because, um, uh, like, last night, was dress rehearsal the night before that was tech rehearsal and the night before that Erin was rehearsing with her with one of her partners and then the night before that she was re rehearsing with lila to get like last minute stuff in so mm -hmm. um yeah. wow a lot yeah. goes into it yeah yeah it's been pretty wild um our um, local circus super awesome. falling apart oh cool not cool really actually no, no. Just by virtue of the, because not enough people are like circus master. Oh, no, the management's thing. just bad. Yeah. She's not bad. She's great. I mean, she's wonderful with the kids, but she can't run a business. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's catching up with her, sadly. Yeah. The so. the person that runs the studio that they go to now also has like two other businesses. So, um, she. And she competes like in national competitions. Usually, she does like pole stuff, um, mm -hmm. but she and and she judges on in national competitions too. Like so, she presumably can run a business. Yeah, <laughs> this seems like it's working out yeah. so far. <laughs> yeah, one of them. One of them is she owns a company that makes the sort of sticky stuff you put on your hands when you're doing pole stuff, so that you can hold mm -hmm. grip okay. better. Yeah. Um. I think she actually acquired that from, well, no, maybe she actually, I don't remember what the backstory on that, but the other company that she uh, owns besides the studio itself is a company that sells like basically like pole ear, like, like hardware. Well, like, like shoes and clothing and stuff. Oh, related to apparel. Performing. Yeah. Hmm. It's smart. Um, we keep having this on Friday, which is mm -hmm. not abnormal, but that's following Thursday, also not abnormal, which is which the means. day after my, my beekeeping class. Yep. So, mm. uh, last night we went through, uh, um, a year in a beekeeper starting with January mm -hmm. and an hour and 30 minutes in, we had made it all the way to May and the guy leading was wow. like, well, buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> and made it for the rest of the year in the final 30 minutes. Wow. Um, and, and like, so May, and then he got to August. He said, August is really the beginning of the year. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> How? 
How does that work? He says an hour and 45 minutes into the talk. Yeah. Yeah. But even so, it was still just delightful. Although people are dropping off. Less people there than there have been. I think people are like looking and rubber sitting in the road. They're like, I don't want to order bees. And I get it. But you've Uh, already placed your bee order. You're ready. I have. I have two hives in the basement I need to paint. My hood is on the way. My you tools to are on the them. way. They can't be unpainted. Uh, you need to finish them some way so that the wood doesn't rot. Yeah. It's just it's just unfinished wood, so you don't want it exposed. Okay. Um, you just paint the outside. Um, it's not like the bees it. are more attracted to a particular color or something. So there are studies around that, and the the suggestion is don't do anything too bright and loud because they are looking for... They don't perceive color the same way we do. In fact, they... Mm-hmm. Um, can see infrared light, which is cool because a lot of plants um, are visible on the infrared mm-hmm. light spectrum. Um, but yeah, so like, you know, lighter, more pastels. Um, otherwise, it will appear as shadows to them and it may be confusing, whereas pastels, they get the full definition and can see. So hmm. uh, everyone says go to Lowe's or Home Depot and buy like the um, mis- me- mixed paint for outside and just go cheap. Yeah. And like, if you want to like, you know, color the outside, go for it. Like, you know, have your kids paint, whatever, but don't, you know, spend anything fancy. Some people dip it in wax, which also makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Hmm. I don't know how you dip something that big in wax. I mean, it's yeah, it's, it has yeah, to that almost big seems like wax. I was thinking about that cumbersome. <laughs> it's it turns out that um people that do this for a while end up having access to a lot of wax <laughs> so shocking yeah 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 he also suggested i love this this, this is this is like where you it, apparently it's it's a thing for older people a hobby for older people well based yeah. on the way websites what? are set up <laughs> i know news to me as well um but um he said, Let's if you order from online, beekeeping. yeah, he said, if you order online, order from like two or three different places, because then you get it on their catalog mailing list. And I'm like, so you can be on uh, two or three different beekeeping catalog mailing lists. Yeah. And I, I was like, oh yeah. But then I was like, wait, why do I need a catalog? But I don't know. I did order from one place today. And then the rest I ordered on Amazon from a company that has a website because it was prime and cheaper yeah. on amazon than it yeah. was from their website um but also i uh i joined the north carolina beekeeping uh state association because it was 15 bucks for a year but to put it in perspective the lifetime membership is 300 so their expectation of lifetime is 20 years so sort of figure that out like it's not a young person's game apparently if they're saying 20 years is what they expect to get from it. They're like, what's your commitment level? Where do you think you're at lifetime wise? Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm sure that's how they figured it out. They probably looked and like, what's the average age? Yeah, 20 years seems about right. Conversely, <laughs> if you were if you're paying annually and you wanted yeah. a deal, yeah, and you were like if you had less than 20 years or you were older and you're looking at like, you know, that math. I don't know that it would be like you would not be getting the deal if, you know, you are older and looking at your timeline and saying, you know, I could just pay. Right. If I'm 85. And, right. Yeah. I would pay. Annually. On, on yeah, the yeah, other yeah. hand, if you were in your 20s or 30s, then that 20 year uh, lifetime membership is a pretty good deal. Yeah, but think about your twenties. Like, did you have three hundred oh, bucks sure. throw away at something? Well, like that? and and could I <laughs> was I into I, beekeeping? <laughs> could I consider well, being committed to one specific thing for twenty years or more? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, also for the fifteen bucks, I figured it was worth it because it comes with a quarterly publication. Ooh. Which I mean, who doesn't want that sitting on their coffee it table, right? The deal. It's called the Bee Buzz. <laughs> oh yes, of course it is. So of course. I... My friend Danette went to go get her passport renewed recently and she said while she was there um, there was like an old lady either in front of her or behind her in line who was just like I'm doing it one more time like <laughs> like oh, no. and I was just like that really puts things in perspective where I was just like yeah like renewing your like 
I don't know yeah. in Canada you have like a five-year or 10-year option mm-hmm. and like I was just like wow it's like it really it's like how Robin's like I have I have this many gardening seasons left and I'm oh, like no. oh <laughs> like wow keep it light keeping it snappy <laughs> wow I, I guess that's a way to look at it though I haven't even considered the number of passport renewals I I have left in me and I'm not <laughs> or the I'm number of summers to. you have left right, I'm like yeah. oh, oh that's a fun that's a fun statistic <laughs> that's, that's not a thing that I want to uh linger on <laughs> Mine is how many more years am I going to pay for term life insurance before it doesn't make sense to you? That's my. Oh, interesting. Yeah. 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 Or maybe I change the amount. I don't know. Or maybe I just don't. It makes sense until the kids are like adults, you know, in case something mm-hmm. tragic happens to me. But, you know, after that, like, probably not. I don't know. A little, uh, little nebulous where I'm going to end that, but every year it's one year less. <laughs> That's the weird part. I just don't know <laughs> what the end is. <laughs> it's like my brother asked if um, if something happened to him or my sister-in-law, like if we would basically adopt their kids. Mm. I was just like, yeah, yeah. Like after some thinking, yeah, we can do that. And then I was like, is there like a paper we need to sign or something? Like something official that yeah. like acknowledges this this agreement has been made. And my brother was like, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Like and I haven't heard anything since. And I was just like So I can answer that. Well, at least I can answer that question in the state of North Carolina. Uh, yeah. Although I'm not an attorney. I guess I should say that before I answer the question. But there I'm sure there needs to be something official. So I called my sister and asked her the same question. If Ron and I both die, will you take the kid, take care of the kids? And she said, Yeah. And so when we went to do our will, they were like, do you know who would take the kids if you both died? And I'm like, yep, my sister. And that's the end of it. We signed and notarized that will, but I have Okay, so there's then. a chance that my brother's just taking care of it and I don't need to do anything, which is great. Yeah. And then the other one was um, uh, the attorney suggested having someone else taking care of, taking care of finances. Yeah. I don't know what, that, what that's called. Um, so I, I messaged a buddy and said, hey, I only want to talk about this once. <laughs> Yeah. If I die and my sister has the kids, will you please handle their finances? She said, yes. I said, wonderful. Bye. Is that, I'll talk to you again in four months. <laughs> is that like executor or is that um, like trustee no. of like? Yeah, trustee. Yeah. Yeah. Of the, uh, of the estate. Yeah. Estate. Yeah. Yeah. So we started an estate. It, it's $20 or $10. I don't remember what it is. Yeah. On paper, it, we each put money into the estate so it exists. Mm-hmm. And then the um beneficiary of uh, most things is the estate and and because there's a legal document in the will that backs up that says if one of us has gone the other has access to the estate otherwise it ends up into uh this other person's hands to uh, execute whatever has to be done Mm -hmm. but but it's all like pretty like people don't really come with like new questions apparently because the attorney was like, so I've got this frequently asked questions thing. Feel free to read it or not. And we sat down for an hour. And like every question I had, he was like, page seven. Like, I mean, he answered. Yeah. It wasn't like a but about it. But he was like, he was like, coming if you up wanna... with anything that it was stumping him. <laughs> not even close. Yeah. Not even close. I'm sure that in his head, he was well, already. That's a good feeling. You don't really want. Weekend plans. You don't yeah, really right? want someone who's just like, I'm not sure. Yeah. That's a good question. Um <laughs> And then I had occasion to hear uh, an attorney speak recently about, um, I guess, estate planning. And um, somebody asked the question about, I don't know what it was, something. And he was like, I can answer that. He said, but we're like doctors. Like, we all stick to our specialty. He goes, so my answer will not be informed by, you know, what people are actually seeing and experiencing. Mm -hmm. So, um, Here's my answer, but uh, if that's actually like the situation for you, seek out somebody that does that like actual, kind of thing. Yeah, that makes sense. And it was like weird, esoteric, like children, child care related stuff. And I kind of spaced out. I'm like, oh, that doesn't apply to us. And then his answer, I was like, wait, I wish I'd listened to more of that. What was going on? <laughs> <laughs> Why is that unique? Uh, but it, it was it seemed unique. So. Yeah, I went to an estate planning uh, webinar 
a couple years ago, so I have a vague idea of like what I would want to do, but I have not acted on it. It's at so all. funny to call it an estate. I mean, that's realistically, it's going to be like someone's yeah, going to have to sell the house, and you guys are going to figure it out. Like, well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I <laughs> that's it. The, the word that come the the thing that comes to mind when I think of the word estate is like some massive, like multi million right. dollar, like single, like a manor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Which is, which is also why like, trust is funny because it's like staircases and like right, yeah 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 the Reynolds estate um, and and trust falls the same way like if my kids yeah. are trust fund kids they can like not even go to fast food at the moment sure based on the current yeah. value of the trust yeah but but in recent years partially because we've been dealing more with that sort of stuff um, with with my parents and my and Aaron's parents um, and also her grandparents like her dad was the executor of their will so we got sort of up close and personal with some of the, the going on there it's, it's sure it's sort of demystified some of that stuff for us but it's still large and amount my parents refuse to discuss it which is sure mm. that's healthy well when they show up today you can sit them down and be like <laughs> yeah. yeah right oh man i have I've, I've been really blunt and like tried to like just been like okay we're doing this we're having this conversation and they yeah. literally just leave the room and it turns mm -hmm. into a big thing and it's just like my sister loves to revisit it um which i don't is even want to like i'm not trying yeah. to revisit i'm just, just visiting the first to, yeah yeah i'm asking like, we just need to touch yeah. yeah i just need to like just tell me where the paperwork lives like that's what yeah. i'm looking for <laughs> yeah 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 i've i've had the inverse of that um i've had the conversations with my dad about like the broad strokes things but not about the the um like the nitty-gritty stuff like yeah. um and i've tried to get more information he's like oh well it's 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 handled and like well okay but like we've seen the day-to-day -day stuff and and the way thing like how long things take and what the like the fine-grained details can be and like without more disclosure we're kind of anticipating a lot of the same headaches and and like you know Aaron's dad set stuff up pretty well as well as he could have um when he was yeah. around and and there's still hurdles and stuff so like we're yeah just anticipating... I don't know there's any way around that yeah. honestly um I don't know if I've I've shattered or not but um Rhonda's mom had a small amount of cash in the checking account mm. um and and of course no no will. Um huh. Did you have uh, to so, go to like probate or whatever? Well, well, that was the conversation. And that was one of the questions for the attorney was like unrelated while we were talking to this attorney. And he said, you know, how much is it? And you know, it'd take me, you know, two or three hours to get this sorted, no big deal. And it's like, well, two or three hours is there's nothing left. And he's like, you know, we're like, well, what happens if you just don't touch it? I mean, because it's it's it, I mean, two or three hours of the attorney's fees would eat it up. There's not mm -hmm. very much there. It's not it's not worth the the hassle, right? He's like, well, eventually, um, you know, although the bank will determine that she's deceased and try and figure out who to get it to, but you know, otherwise, like, it's just gonna sit there, and uh, and it's it's the hassle of like, it's not the hassle of taking it out; it's the hassle of like documenting for her siblings mm -hmm. and jumping through those hoops because there's nothing in place. So it's like, instead of opening that door, just make it someone else's problem. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I wonder how much of that happens in the world, you know? There's yeah. a there's a thing, there's a billboard that I see every once in a while that's like for like mycash.utah.gov or something. And I I went to it one time and the idea is like there's like what it'll say is like there's all this like unclaimed money just mm -hmm. lying around. Um, that's supposed to go to a person, but for one one reason or another, it never did. And I went there yeah. one time many years ago, and there actually was something for me. Like I had a couple hundred bucks. It was probably like final payout from a job or something that I had yes. at some point that I just never received or something. Um, so I wonder if if uh, if that's sort of what happens to probably stuff like that, where like. If nobody claims it at some point, it gets like handed over to to somebody, some government authority, and then they try to trace the thing. You like, well, we have it; it's here. Come mm. get it. Yeah. Go to the the basement. It's like it's like the um, uh, in Hitchhiker's Guide, the the actual 
um, documentation for it was in, where, right. Yes, where yes. the the forms that would that you need to sign against uh, uh, for the um, for destruction the bulldozing of the, the destruction yeah. of the planet. Yeah, is yeah. like in some like sub. sub it's been sub on basement. display in the yeah. basement of this government building for years, and you decided and, not to show up and read it. Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly what it is. Um, the same attorney was talking about a case that he'd been working for two years where it was um, north of a million dollars this person had died with and no will. Mm. So this is – in this case, like an estate is sitting there, and um, they've gone through all the things you're supposed to do, like next of kin and blah, 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 and it – you know, he's like, at this point, like, you know, we have to research who are, you know, long-lost relatives, and they're going to get this call like, hey – got this cash sitting around for you and they'll like, think it's a hoax <laughs> he, he right. said yeah he yeah. said that's the real problem like you know how, how no one's gonna answer that like no one's yeah. gonna believe that right. so um yeah and apparently in that case too um there's legalities around um who has to pay taxes on the earnings from the time the deceased died and when it is absorbed by whoever else so I, you know like i can't imagine like what what a what a weird what a weird situation i'm not sure how it is in the states but um here the person like if someone dies say in february they still have to pay taxes for that year mm -hmm. yeah. or file taxes for that year mm. yeah um which is weird to me Ex i just feel like i'm like can we just cut cut everybody some slack please? yeah that's that's, that's <laughs> let it go yeah I mean, I get it if it's December 31st, but there's probably like a reasonable cutoff in there. February yeah. seems a little like, mm -hmm. okay. Um, there's a certain age though in the US that uh, if you're only getting social security or limited income of some sort, there's a certain age where you hit and you go, oh, don't even have to file anymore. You just check this box. So it's really easy. Oh, that's good to know. Okay. Um, I don't know what age that is. But it probably depends on the old. limited income I, too. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think it scales down, but I think it's north of eighty or eighty-five and some other stipulations that it that play into it. Because my dad used to do my grandmother's taxes and he, he was looking forward to the year when she hit that number where he <laughs> could just be market. like I just get to check that box. Yeah. Yeah, and hit submit. <laughs> and they're like, Great, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who did my uh, grandparents' taxes. I mean, I remember my grandfather having a uh, a desk in the basement in Cleveland, Ohio, where he would have the paperwork and do them by hand. I mean, I guess by hand because there was not like sure, there's no other way of doing when it. When I was a kid, like there would it wasn't what we have like an IBM, what was it, PS2 or whatever? And they're like, no, of course not. No, that's ridiculous. But yeah, he had the paperwork piled up and all that and and a pipe so he could that's the most amazing like, grandfather thing ever. <laughs> a pipe. I know. I know. I, don't think I, ever I feel like I need a desk in the basement now pipe. for that. And a pipe. It needs to be like one of those, I mean, I would... like one of those roll top desks. Like, oh, for yeah. Sure. And the, and a bubble pipe, so I could yeah. Yeah. <laughs> bubbles. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't saying it doesn't have to be like a smoking pipe. Just you know. Just yeah. For the I image. mean, if. I mean, just hanging. If there. you've gone this far without being a smoker, best to just choose bubbles. I think. <laughs> oh, I and he had that. You know, the lamp with a green shade on it. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, that was on the desk. I'd forgotten about that. What? What was that lamp all about? I don't even know. Maybe you get one. There was no you, scientific when you research. Become a grandparent, you just get that lamp. <laughs> is, that, is that? Someone comes and knocks on the door and hands it to you and walks away. Heard your Sweet. grandpa. <laughs> Congratulations. Speaking of, speaking of nostalgia, I came across uh, a concept uh, in my Japan research, actually partially because um, a friend, former co-worker who's still at Human Made, um, Adam, right, he's in Japan right now. Um, and so I was talking to him a little bit about it, um, and I have it on my to-do list to talk to him more about it. But he was telling me about uh, Daigashi, Daigachi bars. Um, and so the premise is there used to be these shops that were basically just candy shops they're like daigab something to make it chop i don't remember what the word is but there's a word there's a history um and 
those are all closed. There's no such thing as those things. Basically, they just got swallowed up by convenies, which are like these massive convenience stores that just have all the things. So there is no reason to have these specialized candy shops anymore. Hmm. But there's a lot of nostalgia around um, those candy shops. And so um, recently in the last several years, there have these, been these bars that have opened up that have – and I guess there's like a particular aesthetic because like – I guess the the candy used to be in like specifically like wicker baskets mm -hmm. like on display and whatever and it's like and it's like cheap candy it's not like Snickers or whatever it's like two cent candy like it's crap mm -hmm. candy um and it's like the candy cigarettes and like candy pipes and and like all that sort of crap um and so there are these bars that have opened up they got cheap bars I think that's right um that you pay like I don't know a, a thousand yen or fifteen hundred yen or whatever. Um, and you have all you can eat shitty candy <laughs> along with other stuff. They have food and drinks and whatever, but like the appeal is, is the, is the nostalgia for, for these old, uh, candy shops that don't exist and, and gorging on cheap, shitty candy. Amazing. Uh, probably. Yeah. Yeah. He was really, he was really excited about them. <laughs> That sounds great. And I'm also like, having not had the experience, can I still have nostalgia for it? <laughs> right. <laughs> There's a uh, an arcade downtown called The Basement, which is not in the basement. It's on the first floor. Um, but well, why is it called The Basement? It looks like an old timey basement. I'm not sure how. Um, Maybe they but one wall up. is all pinballs. Pinball, not pinballs, pinball machines. Yeah, not yeah, just yeah. pinball. That'd be weird. Yeah. Um, and then, and so you, you just pay a cover and everything's unlocked. Nice. Um, yeah, there's... But they do pinball tournaments and stuff. And so Ty was there Wednesday night. There time. was a, um, I don't know if they have, I don't know if it's pay cover, I think, or if you have to pay for the machines, but there's a, there's a warehouse somewhere in Japan that I've come across. I need to dig it up because it's on my, it's on my list of things to research more. Um, that uh, is like a warehouse of, like retro vintage video games and pinball machines and they have like modern stuff too but like there's like it's like multiple levels and it's like huge warehouse thing mm -hmm. um and they've got like tons of like grabby uh the, the grabby machines of varying kinds and stuff um the claw. yeah 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 um one of those things over there no i don't i thought i had one of those characters from toy story where um, is it maybe it wandered off <laughs> yeah i was gonna say i was like well, if you didn't keep your eye on it. <laughs> yeah, clearly. Hmm. I um, we, we talked about, maybe it wasn't last time. Sometime recently we talked about um, gummies. So I'm wearing my, the appropriate hat today. Yes, I was. Re I recognized uh, the hat. I was going to make a comment about it. Yeah, it's it's actually a NASCAR hat for... A driver. I don't remember which one. Who's sponsored by that company? Mm hmm Yes. Okay. Yep. So at the local race, they always have a local booth set up, and you can go get a sample. Sweet. Thanks. <laughs> because those are not, um, like, well, yeah, because those They're are not. It's Delta 8. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, that weird, the weird legal loophole that we were previously discussing. I mean, they're fine. Like, I'm not gonna buy it. <laughs> like, Free sample, though. Yeah, like I mean, it's hat. not that good. Yeah, yeah, I bought the hat actually because I thought it was. I I think it's funny that like NASCAR. Well, obviously, like Winston Cup was what what it used to be called, right? So cigarettes in this area of. of the country i mean there's still tobacco fields not far from here and uh, winston-salem is still a city and um uh so i just think it's funny like they like that's that's not okay in advertising which is federal law but then like edibles are, are cool is, I, I, it feels is like it, the, is, it the, is it the is it the three chi cup now instead of the winston cup no, it uh they don't have a, a brand sponsor. They feel like it was more important to have to to protect their own brand. So it's just NASCAR Cup series, the mm. top level. Mm. And people uh people, companies 
well, companies are people. Never mind. We've forgotten yeah, that. I've right. forgotten that. Yeah. So people masquerading as companies or companies masquerading as people uh, sponsor like races and all. You, there's still so much stuff sponsored. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so it like I'm I'm more fascinated with the way sponsorship works. So like Coca Cola is a significant sponsor, um, but they don't sponsor like a car or like a team or a race. No, they do sponsor some races, but they spot they have like the Coca Cola family of drivers, and it's like. This was like totally of drivers. Yeah, it's like six drivers that they sponsor. Yep. And so um they're so like on their on their car is like a tiny logo, but and all the television coverage, like these drivers pop up and it's like, all right, so you've got um the most popular driver, of course, uh, which is voted on every year by fans, which is silly, but whatever, is sponsored by them. Um you've got Daniel Suarez, who's uh Mexican born, right? So there's a different demographic. Mm -hmm. Um then you've got like an older, older guy who's been driving for longer, right? Because those two are young. You've got Bubba Wallace, um, who is African American, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's very clearly like Coca Cola is like th this is a workshop thing. Where, they come through and they the, go like a we are the are we world kind of vibe. Where's, where's where's the LGBTQ yeah. driver? <laughs> um, coming up and coming, so not in the Cup series, um, but there are a couple couple drivers mm -hmm. in the lower series that mm -hmm. I totally anticipate as soon as they're in Cup series. Is absolutely will be on a team being adopted into the family or Coca Cola family, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and so things like running like those drivers are not running alcohol in their cars because that would hurt the Coca Cola brand. So there's a driver that left a couple years ago because he his team had sponsorship from Bush, so he's no longer part of the Coca Cola family of drivers because that that would, wouldn't mix. Yeah, yeah. Anheuser Busch doesn't somehow own Coca Cola. They're not those two no. companies aren't somehow connected. no. Uh, AB InBev um, is uh, who's InBev? I don't remember what country they're from. Yeah, yeah, okay. no. Um, and um, uh, Coke is still, you know, they're huge. I mean, yeah. Coke is cheaper than water in many developing countries. That's so uh, when I was in Guyana, you could get absurd a Coke for a nickel, and a bottle of water would be 15, 20 cents. I mean. Yep. Yeah, I don't wanna yep. I don't wanna I don't wanna Oh I know I know. I was talking to Ty about that the other day too, and it was like oh it just what in the world? So soccer season. Thank mm. goodness. Uh my our team, my team, one of my teams, the team that I probably care less about out of the two now, because because the Royals are coming back this year. Um played the very first opening match uh, on Wednesday night against Miami. And if you don't know, if you don't follow uh, MLS, uh, Miami is the dumb team. Uh, it's it's David Beckham's team. David Beckham is... The dumb is, team? Oh, yeah. <laughs> David uh, oh. David Beckham is majority owner, if maybe not sole owner. He might be sole owner of Miami, uh, Inter-Miami, because he wanted to make it sound uh, like Inter-Milan. Um, and he basically, as far as I can tell... Because David Beckham is like big soccer guy, right? So he's got Messi on the team. We brought Messi into the MLS last year. Oh, hi. Hi. Oh. <laughs> um, and. Uh... <laughs> Does it work for you, Gary? Oh, it did. Wait it did. a minute. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and there's like, I don't know, three of three or four other dudes from Barcelona. They just got uh, Luis Suarez, who was on the portuguese national team and like played in the world cup from whatever and like so they're stupid they have everyone um so of course they win um but it was what's fascinating to me is not even the game but like okay so messi came into the league last year last year was also when apple tv got basically sole rights to broadcast oh, right. uh mls games and immediately there was this narrative of messi coming to the u.s messi coming to uh to mls um messi coming to miami um all this stuff there was like a, a, a documentary series that was on apple tv plus um about messi specifically about his coming to to the u.s um and then like like even in the broadcast for that game, like he played an okay game, I guess. Like, I mean, Messi is Messi. Like he's nuts, but he didn't score any goals. I don't think he got an assist. Like he played a good game, but like, because he's Messi, Messi, if he was asleep and like drugged would still probably play a good soccer game. 
Um, but like, you know, uh, he wasn't like, you know, 20 year old Messi scoring five goals a game or something, or like running rings around teams. How old is, how old is he? 30. He's younger than you want this number to be. Yeah, (laughs) that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and it's like that, that old tweet, like, you know, 37 years old, like a medical miracle that he's still out here playing like what? seriously yeah well I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah ah, i pulled mean, my arm soccer players <laughs> pull my arm to, being angry about that <laughs> soccer players tend to tend to retire at, at 36 so he's i think he might be 36 or 37 um and but Remarkable. like everything like with, with the with the, like the broadcast uh the commentary every time he touched the ball every time he looked at the ball when he wasn't on the ball we were talking about Messi. it's just like Okay, I get I get that he's on the field. Mm. I get that he's in the league and I get that this is the first game of the season and he's playing. How much of that decision to make this the first game of the season was because it is his team? How much mm-hmm. of like us mentioning his name is because it's the first game of the season and it like and how much of this is like really just a secret draw to get more subscribers to Apple TV? Um, than anything else. I don't think it's it secret at all. It feels like all of this stuff, I was having this thought the other night, it feels like all of this stuff is just converging into this advertising campaign for Apple TV to get more people to sign up for Apple TV, like outside of like Messi as a player or whatever is happening on the yeah. soccer pitch. Like it's just so, all about like app, the Apple TV plus uh, uh, sponsorship on the shoulder. I was talking about um, the most popular, driver in nascar which is fan voted and it's uh this guy named chase elliott who and elliott is a name that's been around nascar for a long time because i don't know what his dad's name is bill bill elliott um so old school fans so you know he comes in he's immediately the most popular driver because it's i don't know because that's just the way that thing works sure um he wrecked another driver last year intentionally i mean you're allowed to do that within reason but like pick the guy and put him into the wall on on an oval and that's that was past line so he got suspended for a race the race he was suspended for, like the NASCAR commercials were like, come back next week for Chase Elliott's return. Like that was the yeah, <laughs> advertising. Like literally suspended the guy and, and they're they're playing up his return as the next week. It was his, and it was I one, loved it. one race. Like it wasn't it was like, one, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. He hasn't been was, gone for a year. Like, yeah. <laughs> yes, it was amazing. It, I, I just, I laugh so much. It's just, um, it's a pretty uh, uh, easy audience to, um, I don't want to say manipulate, manipulate. I'll say manipulate. Sorry if I've offended all our NASCAR fans. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine that demographic overlaps really high. <laughs> our Two fans circles. and NASCAR fans? Two circles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's probably, that's probably the Venn diagram. It's Gary in the middle. Yeah. <clears throat> but more relevant to you yeah. is, is the NWSL uh, season because you have a team in that league. We do, and I need to go this year. I really do. I need to go to a game. Go to a go to it's, a I mean, North Carolina against Royals game. Okay, we have some family friends that have the uh, logo on the back of their car, so apparently they are fans. I should they're, be. I should. So hopefully ask them. they're fans. <laughs> really good. Like historically, they've been really, really good. Um, they've won a cup the 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 cup a couple times. So, so Somewhat it's worth, problem, worth going. And they and they hosted. Um, they hosted the uh, NWSL championship, whatever they call the the championship cup thing, um, at least once, um, if not multiple times. Um, so, so problematic though is that the owner of that team is also the owner of the Panthers, um, mm-hmm. and that guy's like a well, he's like any other football owner. Oh, like I was the only reason like, we don't know that, but there we go. <laughs> well, the only reason we don't know he's he's racist is because he's got good handlers and they keep the media mm. off of him he they were at a game and some fan he was like in the owner's suite on an away game and some fan was talking trash and he threw like a gin and tonic at, at the fan <laughs> which is amazing or just keep drinking don't throw it at yeah, people <laughs> right yeah i i mean yeah like that gin yeah. and tonic probably costs like 15 bucks <laughs> well own in the owner's suite it's it's, oh, it's they're filthy rich they don't they're most <laughs> heavy in the filthy I mean, the filthy part so, but that's all right. I can still go get cheap seats. 
I would like to go to a game. I need to take the kids. I think they would. Well, the other two would have a good time. Yeah, I I think that um, maybe the young one too. Like I feel like I feel like my kids were maybe more interested in it when it when they were younger. I mean, obviously they have attention spans that like dwindled after you know probably the first half, but like there's yeah. so much going on um, at a soccer game that is different than a different sports uh, experience or unique from different sports experiences that it feels different. It doesn't feel like going to a baseball game. It doesn't feel like going to a basketball game. Oh, thank God well, for that. Baseball takes forever. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I like, like, there's a lot of like sitting and just waiting in baseball. Yeah. At least Maybe, I feel. <laughs> yeah. Have you been in, a, in the last few years to a game? I haven't been to a they baseball have a pitch game. clock now. Oh. I haven't been to a baseball game since we went to see the bees when Gavin was like maybe eight or something. Mm -hmm. um, and I was trying to do the box score because that's what you do at a baseball game because you're so bored. <laughs> you're um, like, I need something to do. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 I, I'm convinced the reason why box scores exist because you can obviously see it on the thing yeah. is so you have something to do with your hands during the game. <laughs> so Other the, than the pitch beer. clock yeah. makes it faster, but somehow it's still. Oh, because they only You're like, have wow, a certain that inning was of, really quick, but it was they, still boring. Because they only have a certain a certain amount of time between pitches that they can. Yeah, so it's like it's so like, that's even in Major League Baseball now. It's yeah. like what is it? Yeah. It's there's because it's like um, it's like the shot the shot clock in base in basketball, right? Like where you have to make a shot in. Oh, you're like, all right, you're in yeah. the area. You only yeah. have a certain amount of time. Yeah. You can't noodle Some... around. <laughs> A friend of my dad's was complaining when I was at my parents' house, like, ah, this pitch clock has just made it so terrible. It's taken all the the head stuff out of the game. And I'm like, oh, yeah? Like, I mean, like, I don't tell me more, but I, I mean, I'm stuck here. So sure, whatever. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I used to have like the, you know, the pitcher and the batter would eye each other. And then the pitcher would start to set and the batter would call a timeout and step out. And then... The batter would step in and be ready, and the pitcher would, would wait, and he'd wave off a pitch, and then he'd wave off a pitch, and then he'd take the original pitch. And <laughs> I'm like, I'm definitely not in. I'm not watching baseball on that level. That's amazing. <laughs> I mean, I I, I, I do think... don't feel like that would keep me entertained, though. No, Maybe I, like I, three or four times, I'd be like, oh, okay, I see what's I, happening. I do. All think right, let's do something else. Having having paid attention to baseball at one point in my life, and having played baseball at one point in my life, I do think that that is probably things. Those are probably things that I was paying attention to. I mean, also I was like, I don't know, thirteen or something. Um, but I don't think that would necessarily like. I mean, you have to be really invested to to sit through. Yeah fucking four hours of baseball so i recently have watched chess online oh god realizing that's, that that's makes a... me a huge hypocrite right yeah. but here we are yeah. here we, here we are, are. <laughs> thank you for listening to binary jazz if you like this episode you can subscribe to us on itunes google play spotify and stitcher you can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on twitter at at Binary Jazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. <laughs>